Hello, my name is Alan, and I've been asked to give the third and concluding talk about the breadth of stewardship at St. John's. And, and let me tell you, stewardship is, it's all about the sacreds. It's all about the sacred. And we Episcopalians, we are really good at celebrating the sacred. That is our charism, that is our gift. We're a reverent bunch of people we are. We really are. Just just look at the, the, the care and the love by which we celebrate the mass, the liturgy, that ritual that affirms uh, God's presence in our life every week. Yeah. Turns out I am a chemistry and a physics teacher and I believe in atoms, and I believe in molecules, and I believe in electrons, and top quarks, and down quarks, and strange quarks, and even anti-charm quarks, and the whole rest of it, right? Um, but the ancient Greeks, they believed that the whole world was made up of just four elements. There was earth, and air, and fire, and water and and for the earth the earth is what grows the wheat which becomes the eucharist that's that's our earth and for the air you can you can almost in in the poised sort of energetic stillness of this air you can almost imagine that it could swirl into the whirlwind that lifted the prophet elijah up to heaven that's the air and just just stare, just for a moment, stare at those candles back yonder and see if you don't see in them or through them the burning bush of, of Moses. And maybe it's speaking to you right now. Maybe it has something to say to your heart. That's the fire. And for the water, the water on, on, on the altar, all I can think of is the, like the waters of the River Jordan that sanctify our soul. Earth, air, fire, and water. Those are, those are sacred things. But um, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to tell you about the stewardship at St. John's. And um, it's all about the sacred. But before I get there, I think it's important for me to just say a word or two about what I think it means to be part of St. John's. Now, you might be full as a spirit and, and you know I'm brimming with with faith and that uh, God bless you you uh, it's infectious in the best sense of the word and, and you're really a gift to the whole community it could also be that maybe this is your first time in St. John's and, and maybe you've hardly ever been in a, in a church in your life but there was something in the back of your mind today that just kind of nudged you through those doors and, and, and what I believe is that if you can find something sacred in this space, the earth, the air, the fire, the water, the music, the, the, the rhythm of the prayers, if you can find something sacred, something that opens your heart, even if you don't know what your heart is opening up to, I, I believe two things. First, you're, well, I don't care where you're sitting, you're, you're not alone in that pew. You're, you're not alone in that pew. And second, if you can find something sacred here for, for this moment, you, you are fully a member of St. John's. So if you can find something sacred, in this moment, again, fully a member of St. John's, and I, I think I, I can speak for the, for the priests and the deacons and the vestry and say, if, if in this moment you're fully a member of St. John's, we wish you many moments to come and, and, and welcome. But it could also be that you've been in this church for a while, and, and, and maybe you're going through some hard times. Maybe, uh, maybe you've lost your job, or worse, maybe you've lost a loved one, and you're just kind of grasping on to faith, but it, it's, it's a little scary because every day you feel your, your, your grip loosening a little bit, and, and maybe sometimes, some, some weekends, you, you feel 
you feel like your faith is in such tatters that you don't even belong in this church. And, and, and it's the same message. If you can find something sacred here in this space, in the earth, the air, the fire, the water, the, 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 the preaching, the, the, the blessings by Deacon Clare, the stained glass, if you can find something sacred here, you're not alone in that pew. And there are people to talk to you, and whatever you feel the condition of your faith, you are fully a member of St. John's. Well, now to stewardship. And I can tell you everything you need to know about stewardship with just one really, really short story. And this story comes from the, the Jewish Hasidic uh, mystical tradition. And it's a, it's a play on, um, it's a variation of Genesis. The story goes like this. In the beginning, there was the holy darkness, the Ein Sof, the source of life. And in the course of time, this world, this world of a thousand, thousand things emerged from the heart of the holy darkness in a great ray of light that illuminated the heavens. And then an accident occurred, and that great beam of light burst and exploded into a trillion, trillion little flecks of light that started settling down. And the thing about it is those little flecks of light, those shards of the divine, they're still coming down now. They're, they're entering you, and they're entering me, and they're entering the stones and the trees and the flowers. And the Hasidic folk who tell the story will say that your purpose in life is to find those flecks of light and to nurture them. And I say that's the same thing about stewardship. Find those flecks of light and nurture them. So for instance, um, about three miles yonder in the town of Huntington Organic Gardens, we have, we have three large plots. And if you, you start digging into that soil, you'll see that soil sparkle. And, 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 and that soil feeds the light within the tomatoes and the, and, and the peppers and the string beans and all that stuff, all that food that we give to the people who, you know, who are hungry, right? Who, who, who need that food. And, and that light kind of, that, that light nurtures their light too. Or just, just think about these, these prayer shawls. If I were to come down there and shake one of those shawls, you'd see some, some flecks of light, right? And I can tell you as a physics teacher, that is not static electricity. That is something else. That is something else. And just think how that light from those prayer shawls nurture the light of the people who really need a prayer shawl at that time. Or Sunday school. Don't we have to feed the light, nurture the light of our children? And don't even get me started about the thrift store, because I think Father Duncan would tell you that those folks save us a ton of money in electrical bills, because if you go down that basement, and there's so much light there uh, being nurtured and given off and the giving and the selling and the interacting with other people. There's so much light down there that they don't even have to turn on the light switch. They can see just fine. So in conclusion, if you can find something sacred in this space, you're not alone in that pew and you're fully a member of St. John's. And second, for stewardship, find that light. Find that light that attracts you. Whatever it is, the church school, the this, the that, or maybe initiate something which is a new source of light. Find that light and nurture it. Thank you.